think having those days after a good win, um, I think it gives us, uh, you know, good energy, good spirit. Uh, everybody get um, get time to get healthy and, and ready to, you know, keep going in the season. So I think that's the, the positive side of it. I think it's valuable to have some sort of a reset if you guys try to kind of get back to you know, maybe the defense that you were playing earlier in the season. I think every time uh, you have a little break in this season, uh, in, in this league, uh, when you're playing almost every every other day, uh, I think it's good, you know, to uh, practice, you know, fix things that usually uh, throughout the season, you just got to try to fix it with film because we don't have time or, or days that we can practice. So I think having those days uh, where you we can rest and practice and fix things, I think it's always it's always good no matter – how good or bad you're playing. I think uh, for us, it's gonna work out good, uh, being able to fix those those little little things. Uh, like you say, defensively, I think uh, think that that three, four days is gonna be good for us. Have you guys heard, I mean, that's kind of the first time we've talked about this question, and it's been interesting to see you guys kind of um, I think it was just like, we are still the same team we were at the beginning of the year. Uh, when we were playing well. Uh, so his message was always to kind of try to find that rhythm, uh, find that, you know, I don't know, energy or whatever we had at the beginning of the year and try to get back in tr on track. Um, of course, there were like uncomfortable conversations when you're not playing well. I think that's what makes a team better, uh, not only from him, but players and, and the other coaches too. So um I think the message was that just trying to stay positive, trying to, you know, uh, find our, our way back to playing the way we were playing at the beginning of the, of the season. Adam, was he good at those uncomfortable conversations? Like, we know him, obviously, from the opening of the pandemic, and you guys were so good, but what would it be like to see him in person? I know he's been through so much. Yeah, I mean, he's good. He, he's open to, to listen, you know. He's open to listen to what the players has to say. And uh, he's also going to say whatever he thinks it's, it's right for the team. Uh, I think that's the, that's the way to go. You know, when you, uh, you can't be too hard about it or you can't let, you know, uh, I think the players dictate what the team is going to do. And he knows what he wants for the team and he voice it and he try to get every, everybody on the same page. And, uh, and we've had some good conversation this year, this year uh, about all the little things, you know, like details, things that, you know, players are not comfortable doing on the court and he's always open to listen and, and making adjustments uh, according to what he thinks is best for the team. What's it been like uh, sort of playing under the pace that Coach Munsell likes to play? You know, last year you guys led the league in pace. Um, he has said that he kind of prefers pace like in the half court and doesn't really think that the fastest team is going to win. What's it been like uh, adjusting when you guys have played so last year? I mean, it's definitely different, um, but I think the biggest difference is not having, uh, I mean, Russ was the guy that pushed that pace last, last year uh, more than anybody, you know, I think that's, that was the way we play uh, this year. I think uh, it fits our team to play a little slower, you know, uh, as far as pace. And that was one of the conversations we had, like what's pace, you know, and pace can be, I think by the numbers is whoever gets more shots in the game, something like that. And sometimes those shots are not the best shots, uh, so best shot selection. So I think it goes, it goes both ways, but I think for a team that fits us well, you know, trying to find the right shot uh, in the right spot with the right player. And uh, instead of just, you know, playing the game too fast and uh, getting turnover turnovers and bad shots. So, uh, it is different, but I think uh, everybody's adjusting adjusting well. Is there a way to play with this adjustment and also maybe you know, score more in the fast break and transition when you guys have to play? Yeah, um, you need to get stops, though. You need to, like, play defense. You know, if you're taking the, the, the basketball under the, the net every time, it's hard to score those, those points on fast break. Um, and I think we've been getting those shots. We're just missing a lot of layups, missing a lot of easy shots, you know, uh, and, um, but I think there is a way to answer your question. There is a way you can, you know, run when it's time to run, um, call a play and play a little slower when, you know, the game is, you got a couple of turnovers or you, you miss a couple of shots, you know, finding the right shot at the, the right moment. I think uh, there is a way. Uh, it's not easy because if it was easy, I think everybody would prefer to play that way. 
but um, we trying to get there. I think the the only the only thing that feels different is I mean you're going to play I don't know the Nets and they don't have their their stars you know it's not really the Nets uh, uh, that I don't know the team that they had at the beginning of the year that we played against them but I think that's the only different thing but uh, on those situations I think the best thing you can do is think about your team and think about you what you can do uh, on the court and not think about your opponent I think uh, we still haven't play I mean a couple teams Sacramento has had only eight guys we ended up lost in, losing this game uh so I think it's just it is kind of different but we got to just stay focused on us you know uh, uh I think it's gonna keep happening we're gonna play teams that don't have two three players because of the protocol and we just got to stay focused on on ourselves I don't think we got to ask about Ball. I'm glad I'm glad you brought it up uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean uh, i mean first of all i was the one that kind of uh like it was kind of a turnover you know because i had the ball in my hands we needed to, to make that shot and uh he ended up being a, a jump ball um against donovan and i know he can jump <laughs> more than me so uh in my head i was like i just gotta jump before him and hope that the referee doesn't throw the ball too high and I can actually reach it. <laughs> uh, and I think everything happened how I expected, you know, as soon as I saw him like starting to to throw the ball up, I just jump as high as I could. And uh, and then Pope made that shot, which made look even better, you know? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I'm glad I, I, I got that jump ball and we made the shot and we ended up winning the game. Casey, he said that he heard from Ben Butter so honestly, I didn't know the time. I was just so concentrated on trying to win the the jump ball um, that I did not know there was only four seconds, I think, on the clock. But uh, I'm glad he knew, and I'm glad he heard the uh, the bench saying it. And uh, you know, you worked out well. Coach, um, after the game, talked about how you have real guts and how tough you are. Like, who's been the biggest influence? Um, I think I've, I've always said my dad, you know, uh, he was, he wasn't always the most talented player. Uh, he wasn't the stronger or the faster, but he was always tough playing hard and playing defense and being unselfish and doing those little things that, you know, you need to do in a basketball game, uh, to win games. So I think he was the biggest influence and I've always appreciate guys that, you know, play hard, you know, and put their body uh, um, you know, and trying to get offensive foul or, uh, you know, doing those little plays for the team. And I always appreciate it. And I try to do the same. All right. Well, let's switch over to zoom. We'll start with Neil. Hey, Howell. um, I'm curious, what do you see as your kind of role as a traditional point guard or more of a combo guard and, you know, how does that work with you've been playing alongside Bradley Beal, you know, at late in the games? Uh, I think uh, talking about what, what I just said before, um, the way we play, you know, with less pace and trying to be more organized, I think uh, it's, a, it's a big role uh, for myself to kind of keep the team organized and, and choose the, the right time to run, the right time to, uh, you know, be more aggressive and depending on who I'm, I'm with on the court. I have to try to score more. Um, if we have Brad on the court, you know, trying to find him in the in a good position to to make plays. So I think uh, um, my role being that point guard, and but also knowing that sometimes I need to score the ball and I need to be aggressive. It, uh, it's kind of what I I was last year, but last year I was more of that two guard, you know, and playing the two and three and kind of. Uh, finding my way on the court uh, and this year having the, the responsibility of trying to organize the team it's uh it's big and that's what I'm used to 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 do as a point guard and uh, I'm happy that I have that role and I have the trust from coach to do that.
And then you were talking about, you know, the conversations you guys have had as a team. I'm curious, you know, if what, what's an example of something that, you know, the team has brought up to Wes that he then maybe, you know, implemented on the fly? I mean, I don't want to uh, talk about details. Those conversations, I think it's something that as a group, we got to keep those details for ourselves. Uh, but it's just basketball things, you know, uh, defense coverage, uh, shot selections, those conversations that I think every team has at some point in the season. Um, but I don't want to get into a lot of details about uh, those conversations, just in respect of the team. I think it's something we have to keep for ourselves. Thanks, Raul. Yep. Christos. Hello, Raul. Hope you're doing well. Uh, after that road trip, you have some ups and downs during the, that road trip. What, what was the biggest thing for you guys after the, uh, those uh, road games? Uh you know, it was a tough road trip. You end up well, but the first three games, uh, we did not play well. And it's not only uh, losing, you know, it's losing and not playing well, not making shots. Um, but we just got to stay stay positive, you know, uh, trying to, to, to get our own energy, trying to uh, fix those little things on film. Uh, we did not practice much uh, because of COVID pro protocol and all those things going on, but um, I'm glad that we finished the, the, the road trip with the win against a very good team. Uh, we played really well. We moved the ball. We played the way we've been talking about it, uh, that sometimes it's hard to, to, you know, do it on the court, but we did it. And um, I'll take that, uh, the end of the road trip as a positive thing that we got to keep building on, on it. And do you believe that uh, you came together even more after that road trip, uh, chemistry-wise? Sorry, I didn't understand your question. Yeah. Do you believe that after that road trip, you guys uh, came together as a team, speaking about your chemistry and the camaraderie in the team? Yeah, I think so. I think that last game was huge for us. You know, I think if we had another game not playing well and losing, uh, it'll be tough to come back and have those three, four days uh, without a game. But I think uh, we went through a lot of tough times and that's what I think make us stronger. You know, we, we, we stay on track, even though we are not making shots or we're not playing well. And, uh, you know, like I say, we got to uh, take that last game and try to build on, on it. You know, remember the good things we did, remember uh, how we shared the ball, the energy we play and try to, you know, do the same, the, the following games. And uh, having those three, four games to kind of digest that win and, and prepare for the next games, it's, uh, it's going to be good for us too. That is correct. Well, I mean, that's it's pretty much it. Um, we'll obviously have to be uh, vigilant with our uh, testing. We'll continue to test as we have. Hopefully that's the extent of it. But um, as we've seen around the league, around the country, as cases spike, um, you know, you just have to be a little bit more careful as far as where we go, who, who we're with. And it's really no one's fault. It's just, uh, you know, we can speculate where, where we picked it up. Who knows? But, uh, you know, the biggest thing is that he's doing well physically. Um, and it's just a, a waning game at this point to see what, when he can get two negative tests and uh, hopefully rejoin us shortly. And uh, was that a test that happened today or yesterday? Yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday evening. Um, what's kind of your take on having a little bit of extra time off or, you know, rare little break for you guys? I mean, it's, you never want to miss a game, you know, certainly due to these circumstances. Um, the benefit being, you know, the, the schedule we've had, the uh, road trip coming back late. Uh, it's good to get, you know, another day of rest, but also an extra day of practice, um, something that we've needed. Um, and I think it's also, uh, it's good for our guys, you know, get away for a day, kind of clear their heads, spend some time with their families. This month has been grueling as far as our road schedule. But, uh, you know, once again, kind of recenter ourselves and get back to, uh, you know, hopefully playing the way we're capable of playing. <laughs> I mean, we've been down this road and it's, you know, obviously we're two and a half years in. Um, 
it's never fun, but it's it's the reality. And the protocols are there, you know, for that reason. And there's nothing we can do but to abide and try to, you know, mitigate the inconvenience of it. But um, test as we as we're, we're required and, and go on. Well, it's never fun. <laughs> I mean, you lose one game, it's not fun. But uh, no, I think it's just one of those things. It wasn't the, the losses per se. It was the fact of how we were playing um, that was more worrisome. Um, and, you know, we won one game, great game in Utah. I hope that's the end of it, you know, and not to say we won't lose another one. But um, hopefully that was, uh, you know, more, of, more true of who we, uh, who we are and how we have to play. Uh, it's just one of those things, you, you know, it's coming at some point, you know, we've all been parts of uh, different staffs that have gone through it. Uh, certainly this is new because it's, you know, uh, I'm in a different role, but um, it doesn't change your, your mindset. You're, you're trying to figure it out. You're trying to, you know, rally the troops, you know, keep guys centered on the issues, um, uh, keep them playing together uh, and for each other, and then trying to figure it out. It's not always going to be, you know, hey, this is just one thing. And if we do this one thing, it all fix itself. Um, it could be a, a, a number of issues, but regardless of what those issues are, are we competing at a high level? Are we trying to play the right way? And are we playing for each other? How do you approach, or I asked my colleague, I'm going to three questions for here, because obviously not a very uncomfortable conversation. How do you approach it? I think you just have to be upfront and honest. Um, I mean, I said from day one, the most important thing is building rapport. Because you can't have, uh, you know, a difficult conversation with someone that you don't, you know, have a relationship with. It's probably not going to go well. Um, so having cultivated some of those relationships, and it's an ongoing process. It's not all of a sudden, hey, we're, we're best friends. It's not, that's not how it works. Um, and we're still learning to uh, figure each other out. This is still new. Um, but I think it has to evolve and continue. And uh, because it, it's a long season and things are going to go well for us to, you know, collectively. At times, there are going to be some some walls and some tough spots for individuals. So, depending on where people are on that you know spectrum, we got to find a way to get beyond that and, and and do what's best for the group. But I think to the sooner we can have those uncomfortable conversations and be upfront and honest, the better. Heard so far about like, adjusting to the adjustment thing ahead of the league as a coach. Is it is there a similar process like you always hear about players that they come up with form on their own or they have to adjust to how the team? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have to evaluate, you know, what you're doing and how teams are guarding us. Um, are teams taking, you know, certain guys out? Are they trying to, you know, they put more pressure on Brad? Are they doing different things, if, you know, to us and picking roles? Uh, we've seen some um, schemes with, you know, Trey's in the post. I mean, that's relatively new. So all those things you have to kind of evaluate and see how you can and can counteract that. Uh, but that, once again, is evolving because, you know, it, it may continue for a stretch and then it could be something different. You have to kind of look at, you know, those opponents and how they defended you the previous time. If it's a new opponent, you're looking at the their last five to seven games and seeing how they've guarded, you know, certain teams that play like you or certain individuals that, you know, mimic or mirror the individuals that you have on your roster. So uh, it's a chess match to some degree, but, you know, the experience of having gone through it will, will kind of be the best teacher. Yeah, well, we talked about that this morning. I mean, I think those transition opportunities are, are very important. We haven't collectively, we haven't uh, seen the benefit of, you know, those, those opportunities. And part of it is you, you got to get stops. Uh, we got to finish possessions with a, a rebound to get out and run. Um, and when we do turn teams over, and that's not at a, a high rate, but we, we've been decent with our overall deflections. It doesn't always, you know, correlate to, to turnovers, but when we do turn teams over, we have to find a way to, to, to get the payoff. Uh, whether it's, you know, our spacing, you know, our passing, our finishing, um, you know, that, that's got to be better. And it's not necessarily one thing to say, hey, it's this, it's that. And a lot of times, if you have a numbered break, um, you got to find a way. You either get to a rim, get to the free throw line, or find the open three. Uh, it sounds simple, but, you know, I think it's, uh, it is impactful. 
heads up. We have a new week about what's the plan for Bray this week. Well, he's just implementing him a little bit more in practice. Um, he's still not to the point where he's able to do, you know, five on five stuff. He had a great day yesterday, I thought, you know, the one on one, you know, with a couple guys and they got after it. Um, did some individual work as well. We worked on some team concepts. Uh, so it's a, it's a work in progress, but I think daily it's, you know, we're going to push boundaries when we can. And that's one on one. Yes. Well, I think that window of, you know, the infection, the infectious window, um, I believe is four to five days. So, oh yeah, um, I, I honestly don't know. I think it's it's one of those where uh, some guys pop positive right away. Other, other people, it takes some time to manifest. So I don't know if it's, you know, if there's a particular date we can look at knowing that we've all been around each other, when that might, you know, unfold. Hopefully that's the end of it, but you know I think we we've seen around the league it's it's kind of a you know you're walking on eggshells just kind of hold your breath and hope it's you know you don't see another. With Rui, is there any particular timeline for this shift? As far as in playing, yeah. um, not necessarily. Um, I think we have a tentative timeline in our minds, but nothing definitive is that this is the drop date that we expect him to be active and playing. How valuable. Oh, it's huge. I mean, I think it's anytime you can get those reps and be around the group, um, you know, take your time and really understand the nuances of, of the defense and some of the offensive spacing, the concepts. Um, we don't have a ton of these windows. Um, so, like I said, you don't never, you never want to miss a game, but to have two days where you can just kind of take your time and decompress, but also put in some time on the floor, uh, that's invaluable. As far as the team, uh, you talked about a uh, big big time was the the offensive spacing um, and I think that's you know obviously been an issue at times for us we had you know, great opportunities in in Utah um, where I thought the ball moved and we were spatially um, showed some discipline um, I thought we were playing for each other trying to create the right looks um, and for most of the game it, you know we played that way so just the, the challenge of kind of recreating that energy um, trying to sustain, you know, that type of play. Uh, so I thought it was good. We got two or three uh, competitive segments this morning. Um, and, and, you know, in the middle of December, it's rare. All right, Coach, we'll switch over to Zoom and we'll start with Neil. Hey, Coach, Brad and others have talked a lot about, you know, having to learn things on the fly so far early this season. What were kind of the points of emphasis that you got out of this practice and various practices this week? Well, the biggest thing was for us to be competitive. You know, I think it's, I know that sounds really simple, but um, very few times this season have we had a window where we can, you know, have a live competitive spirited practice. And I thought those guys really got after it today. You know, it was very competitive and those guys, um, you know, we mixed up the groups, so it wasn't necessarily first group, second group. Give it a different look, and I think that brought uh, good energy to the gym. And for Rui, so he's only done 1v1 contact work. He hasn't done any 2v2 or 3v3 yet? That is correct. Gotcha. Thanks, Coach. Christos? Hello, Coach. Hope you're doing well. Coach, speaking about the character, the character of the team, what did you learn, especially in the four losing uh, game stretch for you guys? Well, I made, uh, I made mention of that, you know, where this was a test of our character. You know, this still is. Um, you know, to see how, how we respond. Do we, you know, pull together? We find a way collectively to dig ourselves out? Or, you know, do we kind of go into our shell and worry about our own, you know, situations? Um, and I think it's a work in progress. And I think the guys are trying to figure it out. Um, but you know, it goes back to, do you trust what we're doing? Do you trust each other? Um, I think it's a, it's a challenge when things aren't going well. Um, I thought Utah was an, a great example of that, you know, where we, we played four games and it, you know, hadn't gone our way. Well, we found a way to kind of put a, you know, for the most part, a complete game together um, on both ends and, and, and get a tough win on the road. But uh, I think those, those tests are going to keep coming. And I think that's what's 
a small example, but uh, you know, I think it's it's something that we can kind of go back to and and look at and say, you know what, we've been through this. We understand, you know, now how to react to, to those situations. Can we be better? And uh, speaking about uh, KCP's absence, what do you expect, uh, Hill? Do you expect from your players to make a step up and cover that uh, adoption on the floor? Well, I think just that. You know, we've we've seen it time and time again. Whether it's Spencer on the back, back to backs. Uh, you know, you know, Brad has missed a game or two. So it's uh, you know, we've we've had that next man mentality, and I think that has to continue. We don't know how long it'll take. Um, so whomever that is, we'll, we'll figure it out, and hopefully they'll they'll be ready. We have enough depth. We, we, we talked about that at length. So, you know, that next man has got to be ready to accept the challenge, step up and, and fill that void.